did Dream fake his speed run? Well, my friends, Dream has put out a response to it, and I gotta tell you, today I am fired up. Let's get into it. Welcome back, friends, and a special welcome, welcome to all the new friends out there. I'm Yo BGS, player of games, mod of actually several games on speedrun.com where this whole drama is taking place. All right, so where things began two weeks ago, which would have been back on December 22nd, GeoSquare posted a video, Did Dream Fake His Speedrun Official Moderator Analysis? And in that run, they determined that Dream's luck when it came to trading with piglins was something like one in seven and a half trillion over the, I believe, six streams that they looked at. They also found out that his blaze rod luck was really good as well. So essentially, for Dream to have done what he did over the period he did, it was like one in four, I wanna say quadrillion, it may have even been quintillion, a number too big uh, for me to comprehend. And first things first, I gotta add two things actually. One, uh, I do have to declare a conflict of interest. Dream sent me some things. If you think that influences my opinion, you're more than welcome to uh, that opinion. But again, I feel like as a journalist, I've learned to kind of be able to separate uh, and be objective in a lot of instances. Now, when it comes to the zeal that the speedrun community went after Dream with, here's why I think that. Is. If a fake speedrun is indistinguishable from a normal speedrun, speedrunning as an entity is corrupted. And that can't happen if you want speedrunning to go on. They didn't say he cheated. They said it was too lucky to be validated. And I think that that is kind of interesting because in their heart of hearts, I want to believe that they, they're trying to protect speedrunning and essentially stop people from getting, you know, so that everybody ends up having one in a trillion luck or, or something like that. And I think that that's why they put so much into this because if fake speedruns start getting through, speedrunning is dead. Now, does that mean that I think Dream cheated? No, it means that I quite frankly don't know. By the way, I wanted to say, if you like what you see on this channel, please subscribe. It helps me more than you know, and I appreciate it more than I can say. And also, if you wanna talk about this further, I'm live right now as you're watching this on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash yobgs. I'm gonna be playing some Minecraft Java. I'll be talking about this as well. If you got any questions, you wanna come in and talk to me uh, about it, you can do that. But I'm live on twitch.tv slash yobgs. Let's get into it. Dream side of did Dream fake his speed run the response. Right? Probability. Probability is the measurement of how likely something is to happen. Recently, one of my speedruns that I did on Twitch has been analyzed by the speedrun.com volunteer mod team and deemed as improbable to a degree that is nearly impossible. So lucky, in fact, that they came to the mathematical conclusion that it had one in 7.5 trillion odds of happening, is my response. I can't, I can't imagine having to having to deal with something like this. All right, includes professional professional statistical analysis, public access files, corrections to false information, as well as new information. And by the way, that's going to be one of the biggest things to keep in mind as we watch this video. Is uh, and I see this a lot in the trials that I covered. Again, in my time, you know, having to cover court cases. You want your case to be airtight. If there are some things uh, that GeoSquare exaggerated, if there are some things that weren't true in GeoSquare's initial analysis, the problem with that is it is then going to call into question the entirety of the body of evidence. Even some things that are legitimate are going to be seen as no longer legitimate because, well, they exaggerated this one thing, so why wouldn't they stretch the truth on the entire body of everything? And then when you start to get into the calculus and the statistical methods used, Admittedly, that's where I stumble, you know, and that's why it's been so hard for me and I've waited so long to make this video because it's it's difficult for me to process and I'm aware that in that respect, I'm out of, I'm out of school on. I'm not sure if you realize how big of a number that is, but that is basically impossible. You have better odds of winning the lottery three times in a row. Yeah. So ever since this math was done, I've had people spamming me, calling me a cheater and insisting that there's nothing I can possibly say. I mean, the memes are actually pretty funny. Like I hate I hate being that way, but the, the memes are kind of funny. refute the fact that I cheated. Now, every speedrun that I've ever uploaded on my YouTube channel is still verified and still on the leaderboards, including a sixth place run in 1.15. But That was also surprising to me that all of his runs are still verified. The two things, and I've said this before, in the initial video that jumped out to me where Dream was never actually called a cheater um, and Dream was not 
banned, nor were his runs completely removed. That jumped out to me as big because that's uh, two things that typically in other videos you don't see. If so, I'm not saying that that means that Dream did or didn't cheat or that the mods are, are out to get him or not. It just it was something that was anomalous in everything I've seen. The before. run that I did on my Twitch on 1.16 is no longer on it. Now I plan on going over in detail each of these points later, but I want to summarize some misconceptions right at the beginning. Right. One, the only speedrun that was unverified was a fifth place run that I did on a stream a couple months ago, and all of the world record videos that I posted are still verified. One of the mods said, quote, we have no reason to believe that any of the 1.15 runs are cheated. Two, the odds are wrong. I hired a professional statistician with a PhD that is an active astrophysicist to write an analysis, and I'll be going over parts of that analysis today. Three, and Okay, here's the problem. If uh, GeoSquare said that Dream deleted files and he didn't, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier, right? People will start to question the entire body of GeoSquare's testimony and the evidence that he puts forward because why is he providing information that isn't true? And if he is, does that mean that A, B, C, X, Y, Z are also false? Again, I'm not saying that they are. It's just that's what you see, again, when somebody gets caught up in things and telling half-truths, eventually the court will throw out a vast majority of what they said because there's no reliability. Evidence, and I was doing everything I was asked to by the mods. And I actually have one of the Sorry mods on back. later to come and confirm not included in their analysis. I had the expert include these streams in a much smaller, separate analysis, which concluded that with these 11 streams included, the data shows, quote, no statistically significant evidence that Dream was modifying the probabilities. So now that... All right, but that's... Okay, so here's the thing. I guess I'll get into this now. Um, If the reason he wants you to include all 11 streams is obviously because the numbers then go back in dreams favor but i think the argument that a lot of people in the speedrunning community would make is if the first five streams had bad luck that is where somebody with malicious intent would say my luck is garbage fix it and then all of a sudden something that was one percent is now 50 percent or or more there's no guarantee you know what i mean it's not all in it's not it's not all fake or none of it is, and and I think that's where the misconception that argument way, to me is a little later. bit, a little bit the interesting. Math. I'm not that good at math, and I'm sure a lot of you watching this may not be either. So I found somebody who is amazing Damn. at math and specializes in probability to help get to the bottom of it. Bill Nye, the science guy. That would yes, be. Yes, you heard me right. Okay. That would have just, been a coup. I mean, kidding, that, 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 that's a joke. That's yeah. a joke. A professor with a PhD that graduated from Harvard that's actually a practicing astrophysicist that is an expert in statistics and astrostatistics. After reaching out to this expert, he insisted that if he was going to do this analysis, that I must agree to release his findings regardless of if they made me look good or they made me look bad. Knowing that I'm innocent, I agreed. The mod team is a group of respectable people, but they're also young and a group of volunteers, so it's hard to fault them for making mistakes when compared to a full-time professional with a specific expertise in a field like this. After extensive research, Research into the mod's math and the logic and reasoning right, behind I this math. This here. Dream says he reached out to uh, this researcher. Now, if this researcher does have a PhD and this researcher does um, it has the, the credibility that is claimed here, the researcher would know and account for his own bias if he were paid by Dream. Dream said he reached out to, but I saw some other people who said that Dream hired a researcher. So I'm interested in whether or not the researcher was paid. Because Dream also pointed out that volunteers were used on behalf of the mod side, which would imply that this guy was not volunteering, which would imply that he was paid. And anyway, a whole other thing there. But I think that is important to know, is if the researcher um, was paid for his time. But judging from a lot of the things he said about uh, you have to release the findings regardless of the outcome, that would indicate to me that he actually was just doing it for the sake of the research. expert found that the which wouldn't be unheard. Off. That is so much reason. it's so it's so in the description of this video there's a link to it, a 19 there was something page. called like photo extension in there you got derivatives um uh, the probability of a lucky streak it's it's fun I, I swear somebody is actually going to get their PhD in statistics by writing a dissertation on this at Your some point, if they're expert, not already. It's extremely detailed into exactly what they got wrong and why. I won't be going over it entirely in this video, but for the people more interested in the math, it's linked in the description. I will be going over what I think are the most important parts, though. Yeah, he even included First code of all, in there. the math was off by at least 7.4998 trillion. And the original number was 7.5 trillion and like i mentioned earlier this is a huge number so it's also a huge number to be off by 
on the screen right now is a representation of how far they were off by. Again, I'm sure the mods did their best, but when talking about someone's character and their image, making mistakes as big as this can be really damaging. After coming to an estimate of a new probability, the expert said this, quote, even in the worst case, the probabilities are not so extreme as to rule out any chance that Dream used the unmodified probabilities. The expert well, and that, that is the fundamental debate, right? Uh, I guess the, the question is not, did Dream get really lucky? The question is whether or not Dream cheated. Did Dream modify the game files and and can that be proven because ultimately if dream did not modify the files at all then it's a legitimate run dream just used his one in several lifetimes uh luck to get a fifth place speed run in minecraft which i would rather win the lottery three times in a row obviously we don't get to pick you know the thing that we get astronomically lucky at but um th the question is just did Dream's run fall inside of what could be considered possible? And even at 1.74 trillion, it's possible. It's just, it's, it, but it's so infinitesimally small that you almost round it down and say that the probability is zero. Also said, quote, if you ask what is the probability that anyone playing Minecraft has luck as good as Dream did during these 11 streams, then the odds are very high. Dream's luck can be described not in terms I do also love uh, this representation of the difference in opinion and I, and I think it goes a long way to describe a lot you know this is how far apart we are not just on issues of speed running and dream but it feels like a lot of people are this far apart on a lot of issues just in 2020 and i'd like to think that someone could meet in the middle there in the game I'm just saying. that out of all of the minecraft players it was him who got this lucky and he got this lucky while live streaming but remember this could not be counted against him because he was investigated precisely because he got very lucky I actually ran a survey where I gave 100 random people two options on what the number they talked about meant. Option one, the odds of a top 1000 speedrunner on video or stream getting the luck that I got. Or option two, the odds of anyone doing piglin trades in Minecraft getting the luck that I got. Every single person out of the 100 said option two. They, and probably you watching this based on the survey, figured that the mods presented the odds of this happening to anyone while trading with piglins. They didn't think that this was the odds of this happening to someone while speedrunning being a top 1000 speedrunner on stream or video. As a good example, pick a number between one 10. Go eight. ahead, right now. Pause. Pick a number between 1 and 10. He told me to pause, so I'm pausing. 8. You had a 10% chance of picking the number 7 just then. Now, out of the millions of people... Actually, it's funny and it's interesting that he went with 7 because when asked to pick a number between 1 and 10, uh, people will more often than not pick number... Not Yeah, more often than not more than the other numbers pick the number 7. Watching this, there's probably quite a lot of you that picked that number, but there may only be a few thousand that are recording but also picked the number seven. And there may even be fewer of you that were doing a reaction to this or were live and also picked the number seven. That doesn't change the odds of you picking the number seven. It's still about 10%, but the odds of you being live and picking the number seven, now we're talking about 0.0001% or somewhere huh. around there. Now you can see why it might be misleading to say streamer had 0.0001% of getting this lucky, even though it's technically true, but it doesn't change the fact that you had a 10% chance of getting that number regardless of if you were streaming or not. In the words of the professor that wrote the document, quote, extremely low probability events happen at random all the time. If you consider, for example, every Minecraft player, then a perfect run, two out of two Ender Pearl trades and seven out of seven Blaze Rod drops probably occurs multiple times an hour. Considering all Minecraft worlds ever played and the multitude- I mean, okay, so I get what he's, I get what he's going for here, right? It's that argument that, you know, I'm not a Minecraft speedrunner. I'm not particularly good at Minecraft. It's entirely possible that I get the Ender Pearl trades I need it's entirely possible that I kill seven blazes and get blaze rod drops from them, but I'm not speed. I'm not in that entire context, so no one's ever going to know. Now, something that's interesting to me were a lot of the uh, simulators that have been built out of this. People have built simulators where you can try and get the same luck that Dream got. I think over his six seeds, and as far as I know, the closest anyone has come is uh, Dream got like 42. I think was the number that was in the simulator. Somebody got 40 at one point, but nobody had gotten 42 and nobody had gotten greater than 42. Uh, and of course that was being used as ev evidence against Dream in that situation. But um, it's, it's just, it's super fascinating to look into kind of how everything, this is why in math, right? They make you show your work. Ways in which luck plays a role. Even one in a trillion events happen daily.
But that's not even getting into their actual math. That's just about how they presented it. The first thing that's wrong is that they did not correctly account for trade stopping. Basically, when you trade with a piglin, you trade until you reach enough ender pearls to then leave and go to the stronghold. Okay. When you get enough ender pearls, you immediately stop trading and leave other uncompleted trades. This is a quote from the experts report. Quote, if the last barter in a sequence is always an ender pearl, because then the speedrunner leaves, then it simply cannot be claimed that all barters are fully independent and identical. Without identical independent barters, the binomial model is inappropriate. In okay, so this kind of reminds me of, all right, I think I can actually help out here. Um, have you ever had somebody, have you ever lost something? And then you find it and somebody goes, hey, did you find, you know, did you find your wallet? And then you say, yeah, it was in the last place I looked. Of course it was. So what their, what their argument is basically saying is that um, in, in the model that GeoSquare presented, somebody asks you, hey, did you find your wallet? And you say, yeah, but I'm still looking for it. Whereas they're saying you should have used the model of, hey, did you find your wallet? Yeah, it was in the last place I looked. And I guess based off of that information, it would seem that they can derive different statistics. But again, I have to, say, and I have to use words like seem and maybe and things like that because I'm not the statistician here. I'm just going off of the... The information that's Important. presented. The expert ran a simulation over a million times that shows that his model is far more accurate to how trading actually works than the model used in the report. Quote, the barter stopping simulation does indeed show that there are fewer barters required to get the desired number of okay. ender pearls if you end immediately after an ender pearl barter. It also helps explain why charts showing Dream's bartering outcomes seem unbalanced with respect to ender pearls. They don't account for the fact that ender pearls are special because they are the goal of bartering. Accounting for this problem makes the odds extremely more likely. The expert says that, quote, this model has objectively a higher fidelity and thus a more accurate estimate of Dream's odds. However, another thing that's been used against me is that when comparing this lucky streak to Illumina or another popular runner, my streak of runs looks much luckier than, say, a streak of lucky runs they had. Again, here's another quote from the document from the expert. Quote, the low probability of Dream's runs and that Dream performed much better than other speedrunners should not be considered as independent pieces of evidence. They both indicate the same thing. Any lucky speedrunner chosen because they look lucky will look lucky when compared to other speedrunners. But how would you... Okay, then, in, in that argument, you need to compare Dream being a lucky speedrunner to another lucky speedrunner. And in the video, at least, they claimed to compare Dream to Illumina because if I remember correctly, they said Illumina was a lucky speedrunner as well. But even then... The two weren't similar. And there's something I wanted to point out here because it's kind of interesting to me the way that things are drawn. I think you can see my mouse. Um, so Dream did start pretty similar to Benix there. And then what I thought was interesting here is for some reason when Illumina got on a really lucky streak, they kind of like, I don't know why they did this banana instead of a straight line. But I again, I thought that was interesting the way that the, the dots were connected there. But I mean, it does look like trying to calculate the slope that is exceptionally lucky it's not this but there were lucky streaks and i point that out because i know lucky streaks were something that was talked about in the video so um i remember seeing that in the original video and thinking that considered was considered as independent pieces of evidence they both indicate the same thing any lucky speedrunner chosen because they look lucky will look lucky when compared to other speedrunners. Which not to mention like that a lot of speedrunners run constantly offline, including a lot of the top five times. And these runs are verified despite not being able to look into their RNG at all. That's Another thing that the mods me, got wrong were had the bias corrections. Run. The mods claimed that they biased everything in my favor and that the number they came up with was the lowest possible probability in my favor. One thing that they mentioned in their investigation is that they came up with the number 10 for the number of potential targets for a cheater to change. They also said that this was a generous exaggeration as they could only think of a few. This confused me, so I asked them for a list. When I asked for the list of the 10 that they were referring to, they were unable to provide one and they inferred that it was arbitrarily chosen. So I decided to come up with a list myself of all the possible targets that a cheater would try and cheat in speedrunning that have similar importance to blaze rods. I was able to come up with a detailed list of 37 different RNG targets that I believed were very comparable to blaze rods. I shared this list with a few speedrunning experts, including Illumina and Benex, and they seemed to agree that the 37 I listed were fair and incredibly more accurate than the random number 10 that there was before. This was actually a recurring theme throughout the document. They would say a number and claim that the number was the most favorable number possible for me and then use it in calculations. And then 
when me, other runners, or the expert would look into it, it would turn out that the number that they claimed was the best possible number in my favor was so far from it that it usually was actually the worst possible number against me. Another example of this is that they claimed that the formula they used would find the lowest possible odds in my favor, but the expert tested their formula on their own example of coin flips and found that their lower bound, or what they claimed to be the lowest possible odds in my favor, were actually twice as high as the actual odds of a coin flip streak, meaning the formula they used was extremely flawed against me, and it only gets more flawed when talking about lower probabilities. It seems like it's a very... It, it seems like it's a difficult thing to try and calculate because there are so many mechanisms for calculating different forms of, of probability. And to that, that was sort of why I seized on making an initial video about GeoSquare's um, research because how do you know what model to use in what situation? And, and ultimately to a layperson, to me, to you in a lot of instances, we just have to trust that the model being used is accurate. And now what we've got here is essentially... Uh, GeoSquare saying they used this model that was extremely lenient toward Dream. Dream saying they actually used a model that was extremely strict toward Dream. And I'm sure Dream is going to present his own evidence here. But the question becomes, who do you trust? Who do you believe? Ultimately, it comes down to, and it doesn't help matters any that the discourse about this in a lot of situations has not been civil. And I know both sides have asked that things remain civil, but people get so angry. I'm sure there's a lot of people in my comments already that are angry. That are, they're trying to figure out what my opinion is so they can be angry about it. And that doesn't help anybody get to a better place when it comes to these videos. Because, again, I don't know what the correct model is, but I would almost wager that it's not Dream's model and it's not the mod's model. It's something, you know what I mean? It's something in the middle. But, again, that's just my own... In the report, I don't know. It's my own desire for compromise. The claim that the p values given in the MST report are as favorable as possible is not supported by our investigation. The biggest problem that I have with this is that the way that the mods document was written and presented in the video made me look as guilty as possible, while also putting into the watcher's mind that not only are these numbers right, but they are the best possible scenario for me. Even the numbers that the expert came up with are not the best possible scenario for me. And see, that again is where uh, GeoScore's video runs into problems because. If you say that it is biased as far as possible in Dream's favor, even if somebody comes up with another way you could have biased it more, all of a sudden, okay, that statement's not true. What other statements aren't true? What other statements are exaggerated? What other statements were uh, conditioned or prepared or worded in a way to help better make your point, not the factual point? And again, I cannot stress enough that I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm just saying that this is what I've seen. I've seen attorneys do this time and time again, where if you don't dot all your I's and cross all your T's, they're going to come for you. And that seems like what's happening here. And, and we're ultimately going to get to a point where GeoSquare's video is torn apart. People on the other side are going to tear this video apart. And then all of a sudden, you are stuck in a point where nobody knows what to believe, especially because we've already read 40 pages of math. That's more math than you and I have probably read since high school. And they are That's already I'm saying. way less than what the mods put. Obviously, the way that they phrased it makes me look really guilty. And it was something that they, they didn't even need to do because the numbers looked bad already. One thing that he says at the beginning that I think is notable in his report is that he says, quote, probability calculations are hard. There yeah. may not be one right way to do something. It is hey, easy to violate I got it right. or unknown assumption. What I take away from this is that when talking about a series of events and trying to calculate the probability of them happening, it's really complicated. And different methods are constantly debated in statistics. And that's the reason why a lot of times statistics are thrown out in actual court because they can be misleading and lead to false convictions off of faulty statistics. There's a popular saying about that that says numbers lie and liars use numbers, but it, it's ultimately it's valueless in this situation because you don't know who is uh, trying to mislead you and where they're trying to mislead you. So it's it's just a valueless it's, it's a valueless thing, but it also Even makes on accident. sense. Probability is extremely complicated, and there are tens of thousands of things that you have to take into account when coming up with an accurate representation an of probability, especially on a non-random sample. Although the analysis done by the expert shows that the odds are much lower than the odds of the mods presented, this was done in about a week, and I'm sure that there's a lot of other ways that the data can be interpreted and corrected to make it even more accurate. The expert even mentioned at the end of the document that there are possible corrections that can be applied that would reasonably bring the number down to one in a million or even lower. As much as I would love to debate math and statistics for the next two years, I'd rather just say, hey, here's what an expert said, take it as you will. Well, that's 
plan, I suppose. On top of everything I've said so far, numbers can be really misleading. As an example, when you create a Minecraft world, that world has a random number created with it, the seed. That random number determines how your Minecraft world looks. That means that each different Minecraft world you've created had a 1 in 281 trillion chance of being that world. It gets even crazier when you start to combine the odds together. If you created two Minecraft worlds, the odds of you getting the first world and then the second world are so low that you cannot even calculate them on 99% of calculators. Yet, you obviously did get those two worlds in a row. No one can tell you otherwise. But again, that's misleading but it's still true. Each individual seed has no significant importance and you are going to get a Minecraft world no matter what. So it's actually not that significant, but the way that I phrased it made it seem significant because of how rare it is. Another I feel like it's one of those things sitting here watching. I feel like I've got just a weird uh, face, but again, it is a point, right? You generate a random seed, although that's weird because again, and, and I'm glad that Dream pointed out that this isn't, you know, it's not necessarily evidence that exonerates him or anything, but um, you have a one in a trillion chance of getting the seed that you get, right? But it would be like saying, I'm going to start a Minecraft world with the goal of getting seed number 69420 um, and then getting it. That's the one in a trillion chance, I think. And for some, I don't know. And again, because we, um, we as people are trying to bring logic and chaos and order to things that are ultimately not an orderly system. It feels it feels more like philosophy than anything else. But it's a different it's way that odds can be misleading is with the lottery. How that the odds plays of you out. The lottery may be one in one hundred million, but with one hundred million people buying lottery tickets, someone probably won. And surprisingly, there's actually far more players that play Minecraft than that play the lottery. You can compare this directly right. to Minecraft speedrunning, because with a hundred million people playing Minecraft, tens of millions of people doing millions of piglin trades, someone will be the luckiest player in Minecraft and someone will be the unluckiest player in Minecraft. Might be you, yeah. who knows. But the chances are that there are probably thousands of players that have experienced one in 100 million or more piglin trading luck without even realizing it. So now that we've established that numbers can be misleading and talked about where the mods went wrong with their analysis according to a statistical expert, I wanna move a little bit off the numbers. Let, let's talk a little bit about the video. In GeoSquare's video, he says this. We asked Dream for his mods folder specifically so we could check for any modification. But he was unable to provide any evidence, since he says he deletes the contents of his mods folder pretty regularly. That obviously makes me seem very suspicious, except for the fact that I didn't ever say that. I provided the mods with every file they ever asked for, and I never said that I regularly delete the contents of my mod folder. Actually, the verification team was disorganized and never even asked me anything involving my mod folder until 10 days after the investigation started. See, that's kind of weird to me. I don't know. That... And, and maybe that's the only thing that comes from this, right? Maybe we never know, you know, uh, what happened with Dreams Run, but maybe it gets the Minecraft mod team more organized. Maybe it helps people in other roguelike games, other games that rely heavily on RNG to kind of get their act together on things that have to be submitted with different runs, right? With Minecraft now, okay, so if we assume that they say that Dreams um, Run has a, a luck percent chance of X, now, will other people have to submit other streams in order to get their runs verified? Is uh, it one in 7.5 trillion? Okay, that's too lucky. Is one in a million too lucky? Is one in a billion too lucky? And, and that's something that they're going to have to codify as well as what files have to be submitted for a top 10, a top 5, a world record time in order to completely put them through this vetting process. Because if their argument is that they're not targeting Dream, they would do this with everybody, you'd have to assume that that's going to be standard operating procedure in the future. And so maybe if nothing else comes from it, it, it puts a more streamlined, uh, a more orderly mode in place, essentially, for kind of figuring these things out. They asked me if I had changed it since then, and I said, of course, because almost everyone changes their mods depending on what version they're using. They asked me for a list of the mods I used, and I provided a list. I did mention at another time that I had deleted specifically my 1.16 mod config folder because I didn't plan on speedrunning 1.16 anymore, but it was completely unrelated, and it was after the mods had already said that they didn't need the folder, and that a list of the mods would suffice. GeoSquare admitted this mistake and added a small correction in the description, but I feel like that was a much- See, that's weird. All right, update number two. Who is reading that far in the description? That's actually very, and I'm looking at the first correction. It says Illumina is in the 82nd percentile, uh, not 91st. And this is where the cracks in the dam start to form. And, and it starts to not look as damning as it initially did for Dream. Again, not coming to one conclusion or another, but 
when your argument is crumbling in front of you, it, it's got to make you wonder if you would have chosen things differently or presented them differently to make a stronger case than having to make several updates in order to actually get the right information bigger mistake out. than he made it out to be. How many people actually would have read the description and seen this correction? At exactly. this point, millions of people had already heard this mistake and were unlikely to see this very small correction. And a lot of people hung on to that as me destroying evidence and will never hear this response. So I decided to ask one of the official speedrun mods to come on my video and clarify. This is Wills, one of the official speedrun moderators. As a moderator who has done 99% of the communication between Dream, I can confirm there's absolutely no hesitation to provide us what was needed. And Dream was never uncooperative during the investigation process as far as we know. So past that, there's really only three major ways that you can modify your Minecraft to increase your luck. You can do it with a data pack, you can do it with a mod, and you can do it by editing your version's jar file. Shortly after my stream ended the day that I had my good run, I actually uploaded my world file to Google Drive almost immediately. You can see when it was uploaded and you can see when any of the files within it were edited. This is all in the metadata of the file. This folder contains the data packs folder and also contains the startup logs that show what mods are loaded. Within the data packs folder, you can confirm that there's no data packs and that no data packs were deleted because it was not modified after the world was created. You can also see in the startup logs that the only two mods loaded were allowed mods and that there were no I think this was also something that was used as an argument against custom mods loaded. I don't expect you to trust me on this blindly, so I actually put the link and a tutorial to download it and how to see it for yourself in the description. On top of that, I was also able to upload my jar file that has been untouched, both with modification dates showing that they were not changed or deleted after the run. Now, the mods never asked me for this file, so I only uploaded it recently, but the modification dates are still there. With this, it can be shown that I almost definitely did not modify the game in any of the ways that were speculated. Although, of course, it's never impossible and you can always find a way to do something if you want to. The most yeah, I was about to, to say, isn't it possible to edit metadata? It would take somebody, again, infinitely more smart than I am, but... That's that's the problem, right, with my being a layperson is I just assume if something exists, there's a way to modify it, and, and I wouldn't know about it. But then again, that's why I'm not a, a moderator, and I would assume that that committee of individuals that we saw earlier would would be able to reach a consensus about what this came or those. What? So the first thing that I want to say before going into more specific subjects is to please not send hate to anyone involved. I yeah, that didn't. I'm from the Twitter future, Dream. That didn't happen. To the mods after the video was released, and I really don't want to send hate to anybody. I responded incredibly immaturely at first because I was angry, and I, I really do regret my response. But I would think that the average person being falsely publicly accused might react in a similar way. I don't know. I, I'm very competitive, so being called a cheater just really set me off at first. But not to mention, you're somebody who is not necessarily used to the spotlight. Remember, Dream didn't really have much of a platform, you know, 18 months ago. And then you're, you're a young adult thrust into the spotlight, and now everybody's calling you a cheater. I feel like if I were 21 and in a similar situation, I probably would have said some stupid things I regret, too. Not to say, that's not excusing any of it. I'm just saying I understand that, and, and obviously, yeah, the apology was needed. He made the apology, so that's at least a, a step but in the right now direction. Now that that's there. out of the way, in the video, they used the logs that I mentioned before to show that I had Fabric API loaded, but they didn't mention that it showed that nothing else was loaded. They also alluded to the fact that I'm suspicious because I used Fabric, a mod loader. But Fabric is used by more than half of all of the top runners on the leaderboard. And actually, I would have much preferred using Optifine, where you can't use mods. And I did, until they banned Optifine from speedruns and told people to use Fabric instead. So I switched to Fabric because I had to, and then I was called suspicious because of it. You can actually tell that I would have preferred to stay on Optifine because I ran 1.15 live shortly after these runs, where you can actually use Optifine, and I was using Optifine, not Fabric. Matter of fact, in one of those 1.15 runs during that stream, I almost broke the world record on a version that doesn't have piglin trades and also on a client that doesn't have an option to add mods. So I don't think that the way this was phrased in the video is a fair way to put it. But another thing is that Geosquare said in the video that Fabric API was a mod creation tool. The Fabric API a mod creation tool. Which is just extremely misleading. It's a required mod for almost every single mod in Fabric. So much so that a lot of people think that you need it for every mod. And I was actually asked by the mods if I thought that. But they didn't mention that in the video. And yet again, they used... It's weird, right? It's weird to have all these inconsistencies. It's almost like GeoSquare knew that uh, people, you, again, you and I who don't know much about the world of Minecraft mods and things like that, that we would just take as fact the fact that Fabric is a mod creation tool. And knowing that people would just take that word as fact, uh, it was deliberately chosen that I'm just going to say that Fabric's a mod creation tool, not not uh, provide any more explanation into anything. That's all that they need to know. It's weird, right? That's all I'm saying is just to me, 
that seems suspicious. And again, since this entire controversy is based around things that seem so suspicious, they have to be false. That to me seems so suspicious that it would have to be misleading. But again, I, I don't know. And I've, I've already admitted at the beginning that I am kind of biased. So who, you know, who knows if that's, that's my bias to make action. me look suspicious. He also uses the logs and shows them on screen as proof that I had Fabric API loaded. But again, he doesn't mention that it doesn't show any other mods loaded. And that's called cherry picking using the facts that support your claim as evidence, but ignoring any facts that go against your claim. If they were being completely fair, he should have presented the fact that this log showed that there was no other mods, but it would weaken their argument, so they didn't mention it. And this is a recurring theme throughout the video. He says a lot of things that might be partially true, but says them in a very misleading way that would make a reasonable person think that I look guilty. I'm sure there's a chance that one of you or your friends saw that video and went, wow, Dream deleted evidence because he's guilty. And that's my biggest problem with the way that they handled this. I don't blame them that much because they're a team of volunteers, mostly consisted of young people, and everybody is bound to make mistakes, especially when you're younger. And but that's the thing, right? One mistake, uh, one mistake is a mistake. Two mistakes, what is it? One is a fluke, two is a coincidence, and three is a trend. So when you look at things like this, and you, you see this, again, starting to crumble, you see the cracks starting to form, you see at least three things that already needed to be corrected in the original video itself, I don't know that there was malicious intent, but it feels like it was written from a perspective of, I don't, not, it wasn't written from the perspective of, I want to present all of the evidence in a non-biased fashion. It was written from the perspective of, we think Dream did X, we're going to frame Y, Z, and everything else in a way that confirms that hypothesis. And, and again, just going off of these two videos, not knowing the intent of the, the people in question, it's kind of hard to say. Me. But when you're calling into question someone's character, you really have to be careful what you say. The official owners and admins of speedrun.com, which run the leaderboard, made a statement that the video was, quote, lacking in the level of objectivity we hope to see around communications by the game moderation team to the community. Which, I completely agree with. I wish that the mods would have remained more neutral and just presented the facts because that's their job as moderators. And I just want to say here that at this point, I don't care if my run is verified and I'm not resubmitting or appealing the fact that it wasn't. As much as I may disagree with it, I've never really cared too much about leaderboards and I wasn't even planning on submitting any 1.16 runs because I was just playing for practice and for fun. I mean, I was streaming on my Twitch and that's why I didn't... By the way, imagine being the uh, owners and the head admins of speedrun.com. There was just, I think, uh, an ownership change at speedrun.com. So you take over speedrun.com. Jaden puts out her video that explodes the website with a bunch of people interested in speedrunning. Now this controversy happens and you've got more people coming in, although this is a different level of interest. Upload in any 1.16 runs to my YouTube channel. Regardless of the fact that the 7.5 trillion odds are incorrect, I still had a very lucky streak, something you probably wouldn't expect to see in a small community like speedrunning. You would expect to see it in Minecraft overall, but it's much less likely to happen during a speedrun. So for that reason, I understand completely why the mods were skeptical and I respect their decision not to verify the run. You know what it reminds? It reminds me of blackjack, right? Uh, in a casino, if somebody is getting very lucky at blackjack, they're, they're going to get a talking to. Um, at least that's what you know what you see in movies and things like that. But if somebody ends up being too lucky, and it is entirely possible that somebody could win a hundred hands, a thousand hands, something ridiculous in a row, and I know you're probably going to say that's less of a probability than what happened to Dream, but that person would be uh, uh, asked not to return uh, ultimately. Now, what the uh, casino owners assume about that person behind the scenes is kind of uh, up to them. But you see people go on lucky streaks. And then essentially be punished, you know, no good deed goes unpunished, right? So you see things like that that have happened before, and it's almost like that's the case here. Dream got astronomically lucky, now he's being punished for it. But again, you go into a casino, you agree to abide by the laws of said casino. You submit a run to speedrun.com, you agree to abide by the rules of speedrun.com. And if the rules for that particular game and the rules for those particular mods are, are you know, from those particular mods, is that you can't get x amount of lucky you kind of got to play by those rules if you want to submit to the leaderboard And it sounds like dream 
doesn't even necessarily want to do that, made, which and again is his prerogative. There's a much lot of the mods to have those rules that I cheated and never get to see this video countering it. But I don't believe that the mods were being intentionally malicious. I believe that the reason this was handled poorly can just be attributed to the fact that I have a huge channel and they're not used to dealing with that. So they obviously did quite a few things differently than they usually would. Now that I've pretty much talked about proving every possible way that I can about why I didn't cheat, I want to talk about something a little bit more serious, which is just related to bias. And again, even though I'm expressing this, I don't want to send any hate to anybody. And I Too believe late. that the mod team is full of very Future happened. Honest Too late. But I made some claims early on that I felt targeted and that I thought that the mod team was biased. And a lot of people were upset with that because they couldn't see how they could be biased. I just want to share my point of view because from my perspective, maybe you can understand why I reacted the way that I did. First of all, the speedrun.com Minecraft Bedrock Edition team, which is a similar team to the one who worked on this, but for Bedrock Edition, completely banned me from ever submitting an official run well before this happened without giving a single reason why, other than that they don't like me. And I have never even played Minecraft Bedrock Edition or done a single speedrun on that yeah, by the way, um, I was in, I'm in that Discord, and that was kind of a mess this morning. Game. But I'm still banned, and I have yet to be told why. Obviously, this didn't give me as much confidence in their sister team, Java Edition, giving me fair treatment. However, I don't think that the actions of the Bedrock team reflect on the intentions of the Java team. Another thing, though, is that while the mods were looking into my 1.16 run, a lot of the official speedrun verifiers were saying incredibly disrespectful things about me, about my fans, and essentially harassing me, which obviously led to me saying some things that I regret saying, but I'm sure that anyone can understand why that would be frustrating. Before all this, I tried to be extremely friendly with the mod team and I helped them catch many cheaters. There was actually a point a few months ago where I was in a call with a bunch of them doing basically a PowerPoint presentation with proof that the world loading screen can prove one of the top runs is fake. And that run ended up getting unverified because of it. So I'm definitely no opponent to getting rid of cheaters from the leaderboards and I do my best to help where I can. But although it's weird though, right? Because I think, you know, Carl, there are definitely some instances of people who, um, and, and I'd said Carl there a second ago. Don't you think I'm talking about Carl Jobs? I'm thinking about um, his, his video about Badabon, which is pretty, pretty awesome as well. But um, there are instances of people who got busted and essentially thrown out of a community for cheating speedruns who then catch other people. So I could see people saying that, well, that proves that, you know, Dream uh, did fake the runs because if he did, then he's, he's going to catch the people that uh, also faked it because he knows what to look for. So interesting to me in that case because it's not there are people that will use that against him during the investigation i had my doubts about the way that the investigation was being done and i was really stressed about it because i was almost completely left in the dark and i, I didn't know what was happening and everything that i did here didn't really make me feel super optimistic about them doing a good job one of the mods who asked me not to name them frequently said things that led to me having doubts about the investigation quote everyone was still discussing whether the decision was right 10 minutes before the video was published. And yeah, also, that's quote, not, they right. were just yelling at each other to finish faster. That same mod told me after the results were released, quote, for the record, I don't believe at all that you cheated. And also, quote, I'm probably going to be quitting the mod team because of this. There are only about 10 or so active moderators that were involved in the investigation, as far as I'm aware, and, and this was one of them. And I'm sure that anyone could understand why it would be reasonable to doubt the decision if I'm being told this by one of the moderators. I really worried about what was going on behind the scenes because of this, and this occupied most of my stress. And this isn't really important to the math, but it's definitely important to how the math is interpreted. If the mod team was biased against me, they would be more likely to make mistakes against me, like misquoting me or using incorrect formulas, because the small details wouldn't matter as much to them even if they wouldn't do it on purpose which I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't also when it comes to the discussion about whether or not they need to finish faster now uh, not having seen the discord logs i don't know if that's an actual thing that happened but if that is a thing that happened when you hurry mistakes can be made right that's where things can be omitted you can get into trouble for any number of things because you're in a hurry to get it not to mention if you're in a hurry it almost sounds like you're trying to get to a particular destination not whatever the conclusion may be. You know, like, hurry up. We, we need to prove this so we can get the video. I, again, I'm just saying that that seems, I don't know. There are, I think at this point in the video, it's safe for me to say that there are too many holes, too many corrections, too many addendums that have had to be made to GeoSquare's video to take it as absolute fact. Dream is obviously biased because Dream is trying to protect Dream. But when it comes down to it, he provided the files. The files are not, modded he's got the the dates when they were last modified so do you just get one in several million lifetimes luck 
it can happen. As much as that sucks for me, and I wish that some members in the speedrun community looked at me differently, it is what it is. Before this whole thing went down, I had a lot of respect for the mod team, and I really hope that even though I'm not happy right now, I can regain all of that respect for them, and I hope that the same goes for me, because I, I said some dumb things Good too. Luck. Because the community is sure. an amazing place, and like I said, it's not like they're intentionally trying to sabotage my career or something. I mean, they didn't like, ban I'm me flustered. or move this any of my other ones to do anything you know? super unreasonable and, and out of bias like the Bedrock mod team did. I, want I think if they had to move my other ones or banned me, that would have been very biased, but I don't think that what they actually did was biased and like i said i do believe that they tried to do their best to come to a fair decision after reading the document myself i was surprised and it seemed like a very good job the only reason i was insistent on the math being wrong is because i know that i didn't cheat and i also know that 7.5 trillion is just too unlikely to be reasonable if i didn't cheat so i could assume that the math was off Again, I don't care at all about my speedrun. I care more about defending my character than defending a dumb That's leaderboard fair. position. When I joined Minecraft speedrunning, I didn't even submit any of my runs, and it wasn't until I saw some comments telling me that I should that I ended up doing it. I was mostly practicing for Manhunt because I wanted to try and challenge myself even more. Now, Matthew, which is the most qualified speedrun mod who wrote a lot of the paper, said in the Discord chat after the video was uploaded, quote, look, at worst stream did mild cheat at block game fast make of that what you will. Obviously, I don't agree with that because I think that cheaters ruin the heart of the game, but I just don't think that the mods realize that to me, it's much deeper than a leaderboard position. I have an amazing community and an amazing group of fans and I don't need to officially speedrun. I, I do it because I like it and it's fun. I get less viewers on my record videos than I do on my normal videos and I get less views on my speedrun Twitch streams than my normal Twitch streams. I also didn't even huh. upload a single one of the speedruns that were investigated onto any of my channels, not even highlights or anything. So again, to me, I care much more about my character than a leaderboard or any kind of benefit I could get from speedrunning. One of the last things that I want to mention is a quote from one of the Minecraft developers. Quote, just going off of chances is quite dumb. Also, quote, a lot of speedrunning Minecraft is RNG, or at least speedrunning until you get good RNG. Right. Then he went on to say, I mean, that makes sense. quote, they really should consider a better process. Like you can force speedrunners to stream with some anti-cheat mod or something. And this is actually something that I've suggested many times. And a long time ago, I even offered to try and help come up with ideas for it. But as the speedrun mods are volunteers and don't get paid, it would be really hard to find a developer to do it. So as much as I could suggest it, they never were able to do it. You may have noticed that this video has monetization on, and that's for a reason. I'm gonna be taking every dollar made from this <laughs> video and donating the creeper it to the blew mods up. Some in order of the gold was missing a there. speedrunning client. That way there will be less cheaters, and if you get really lucky, you're not gonna get accused for it. Even though I don't have any plans to speedrun for the leaderboards thing. in the future, I still love the community, and I think that this would be a really good thing for the speedrunning community, so I'm looking forward to see what happens. As a final closing note, if despite all the evidence that I've presented, you still believe that the odds are too low, I want to mention a couple things from the report. One, the expert that wrote the report says that he, quote, disagrees that the situation suggests that cheating is an unavoidable conclusion, and two, that the probability presented is not the probability that I'm innocent. It is just the probability of a rare event happening under specific circumstances. And the expert says that in order to find a correct probability of me changing the drop rates, quote, external evidence that the probabilities were modified at this specific point would be needed to produce a significant probability of cheating. Essentially, the fact that something unlikely happened shouldn't be the only evidence to back up an accusation. But I think that's all I have to say. Thank you if you listened to the whole thing. I encourage you to like this video. That way it has a higher chance of getting put into the algorithm so more people see it. Generally, accusations are seen much more than the responses to those accusations. So kind of sucks. If you see somebody talking about this, I encourage you to tell them. I don't know though, video. but when you dream, Otherwise, I think that makes a difference. Thanks for watching. Bye. Again, if you want to talk about this, uh, and, I, and I certainly do, I'm live on Twitch right now, twitch.tv slash yo BGS. But uh, again, to my point earlier, do I think that Dream cheated? Well, I know this much. I know that um, GeoScore's video cannot be taken as 100% fact because of some of the, the glaring issues that are a part of it. I also know that Dream is biased in making Dream's video in favor of Dream. So I think a lot like what I said earlier that the response or the answer or everything is, is somewhere in the middle. Uh, and that's where things get difficult. So unless it's proven that some file was modded, I can't, I can't say that Dream cheated. I just can't. And if, if people hate me for that, if you downvote this video because of it, it is what it is. But I just can't say that Dream cheated. That's where I'm at right now. It doesn't mean that he didn't. It just doesn't mean that I've, I've had enough proof to see that he did. Now, again, if uh, you like what you like this, you watch it this far, I appreciate you for it. I think I'm going to have to edit this heavily because as I'm looking at it, it's a 55-minute video at this point. So I may cut some stuff out in the middle. But... Uh, Subscribe if you dig this. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for hopefully something a little bit less serious. Take care, my friends, and I will see you for the Salty Runback.